Hey folks, how y'all done today? Boy, it's some pretty weather out here now. I'm glad to see all this. What we have for you today is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grind our malt. I've done ground my corn. I'll show you my, my corn, how fine I like it. I don't like it too fine, I don't like it too coarse. Uh, we're gonna get on into that. We're gonna make some mash, may even do some other things. Just stick around with us and we'll get right back to you. Mm -hmm. Okay guys, this right here, this is our corn that we malted, that we've done the videos on. We're going to grind it. I like my corn, my malt, especially pretty fine because it's a great nutrient for your yeast and it really helps your mash out. So let me plug this thing up here and we'll go into this and we're going to, we're going to grind some corn malt. Fine. As you can see, that's pretty fine Sorry guys, that took a minute. Well, this right here is about where I like my corn malt. As you can see, it's pretty fine. And uh, this right here is this is a this is a big difference in in all your mashes, your malt. I like it fine because it's a great nutrient for the yeast. It it really works good with the corn. I try to malt what corn I'm using in my mash. Whatever corn I'm using for my mash, that's the corn I'll malt. And if we'll step right over here, I'll show you my corn that I ground earlier. As you can see, it's a little finer than cracked corn. It's just knocked down a little bit more than cracked corn. And that's why I like that. I don't want a big dough ball in the bottom of my mash barrel. So y'all hang out with us. We're going to use this corn. We're going to go over a simple corn mash that'll make some great liquor for you. So hang around. Well, we're back, guys. I put some hot water in here on this corn. What, what I try to do is my regular ground corn, I put about three to four inches in the bottom of a 55 gallon drum. It don't have to be an exact science. Then my water, I heat it up to where it's almost boiling, you know, like 180, 190. I don't know, because I steep my corn. I don't cook it. And if you look in here, the water is turning a milky color. See, that's turning that milky looking color. You see the corn down there on the bottom. That's what you're wanting. You're cooking that corn. And the thing about this is, is you just got to keep stirring it. I try to steep my corn for about 30 minutes before I add my sugar. And more hot water. So I want that corn cooked. I want it cooked good. But I don't never cook my corn because a handful of scorched corn will make a whole bunch of bad liquor. So let's try not to do that. Uh, we'll be right back with you here in just a second. And uh, we'll see. Alright guys. We steeped our corn now for probably 30-45 minutes. I'm going to check it to see if it's cooked. And uh, as you can see, it's soft. So that corn is cooked. It's been in there long enough. It's done cooked down. My, my water, my hot water, is nice and, and milky colored. So I know it's all, all doing what it's supposed to be doing. Now we're not doing this in a scientific way. We're doing this in a, in a heritage, in, in an old school way. This corn, corn mash right here will do you good. What we're going to do now, we're going to add our sugar to this paddle out of here. Yeah, it is a Walmart paddle for $9. It's a good mash paddle. What I tend to do is I like to put one pound of sugar 
for every gallon of mash that I have. And it, it's a 55 gallon barrel. We're gonna have about 50 gallon mash in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put 50 pounds of sugar in it. You gotta make sure your water is still hot enough to dissolve your sugar. This water is still probably 170 degrees. And I just cut my bag right there in the middle. Tip it over and break it. Then I put sugar in the mash. It's nothing fancy, nothing, nothing expensive or anything. Uh, one thing I do want to talk to y'all about. Make sure you burn your sugar bags. Don't throw them in the garbage. Burn your sugar bags. Uh, especially if you use as much sugar as I do. You throw away 10 or 12 of these 50 pound sugar bags, people are going to ask questions. You make sure you got you a place to burn them. Throw them over the pile and burn them. Now we're going to stir this up, and you'll see that mass change as that sugar dissolves. You'll see the, you can actually see the gravity changing in the mash. And you all notice I won't use a hydrometer, I won't check my gravity. Because I already know, I mean I've done this so long, I already know. See how the corn's trying to float a little different stuff on us? That's what we're looking for. And the sugar is just, it's already dissolved. Keep you some good hot water in there. Y'all come back here in a minute, and we'll get uh, the yeast and the corn malt put in there, and we'll let her work. All right, guys, what we've done here, I took my water hose, and uh, which we have real good well water. We'll talk about our water situation here in a minute. But I went ahead and filled this thing on up. There's a mark right here on this that marks 50 gallons. That's where I filled it up to. On my hot water, I try to do about 20 to 25 gallon of 180 to 190 degree water. And that's what I steep my corn in, so that's what I melt my sugar in. But I always steep your corn for 30 to 45 minutes before you add your sugar. Let your corn get, get, get cooked good and everything. So uh, what I'm gonna do here is a key part of this mash. You've got to draw oxygen into your mash somehow before you pitch your yeast. That's what's gonna kick start your yeast. And uh, here's how I do it. I'll pull up from the bottom one time. And then see the little swirls and how I'm picking that up? That's getting oxygen all in that mine. You'll see the bubbles. You'll see the oxygen bubbles start to rise. And I'll pull down, pull it up. Right. Now you can see your, your bubbles. You got oxygen in your mash now. I'm going to use my thermometer. My trusty thermometer, well, I've used this thermometer for years. It's never let me down. You want your mash temp at the end in a 50 gallon drum. If you use 25 gallon of 190 degree water, by the time you fill it up, you should be between 85 and 100 degrees. So let's get my thermometer here and we're, we're going to try it out in this mash and see where we are. Let me get down my pocket. All right, here's, that's my thermometer right there. So I'm going to check it out here. We're probably right around 95 degrees, which is perfect. That's where I want to be. Now, this step is something that uh, that you really need to know. Everybody wants to cook their malt. And you don't want to cook your malt because that takes every, every bit of work that you've done out of your malt. So you want to add your malt when you add your yeast and uh, go from there because that's, that's what that malt is. That malt's got some natural yeast out here. It's a great nutrient for the yeast. And you don't want to kill your malt just like you don't want to kill your yeast. So what we're going to do, we're going to add this, guess about a gallon of malt. We're going to add about, about that much malt right there. Because i got to save some of that for the giveaway. Okay, now that the malt's in there. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to tell you something. The yeast I'm going to use in this, a lot of people laugh at it and go on. But you could make 12% alcohol with this yeast. And when you get done distilling your mash, you'll have a sweet mash with no aftertaste. It's red star dry, active dry yeast. And uh, this will work just as good as D-A-D-Y because I don't ever try to run my mash over 10 or 12%. I, I wanna keep my flavor, I wanna keep my sweetness, I wanna keep everything in it. So all we're gonna do is we're going to guess it is too. 
we're going to put about, I say, that much yeast right there in it, which is about a quarter, quarter of a pound, maybe, you know, quarter, well, maybe close to a half pound, but we're going to guess at it. When you stir this, you want to do the same things you did before when you drew the oxygen in. You know, pull it from the bottom. And bring that oxygen back in. Don't worry about the little clumps of yeast up there. They'll go away. This stuff will be living in the morning, believe me. And uh, you just want to get it stirred good. Get you some good oxygen flowing down in there. See all the bubbles coming up on top. That's what you want to do. Now, as you can see, it's it's gonna sit here and go round and round in circles. We got a little bit of a cap. That don't bother me. You don't have to have a perfect cap on every mash that you do. Uh, it's just according where you got your corn from, out of your barrel and stuff like that. But uh, it'll make a pretty decent cap in the morning. This stuff will be working like boiling water. We're going to cover it, and we'll come back up here in the morning to check on it. But that is a simple corn mash. You don't have to get real, you know, technical on this stuff or anything. And I promise you, you could make just as good a liquor with this as you can with all those different recipes and poundage and, and this much and that much. Just do it the heritage way, the old way, just like I just done it, the way the old timers did it. And you'll be surprised at what you could do. Thank y'all. We'll see you soon. All right, folks. I just want to give y'all an update. After about ten or fifteen minutes of setting, I come back with my board to cover my burrow. I like to do open fermentation, but I do cover it to keep the water and the big critters out. But if if you could zoom in here or come in here and look, you could see the cap I was talking about. And uh, that's most likely the corn malt and the yeast starting to work within 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, our temperature's right, the weather's right for this. And I just want to show y'all what the cap's going to look like on this mash. So we, we appreciate y'all tuning in, and we'll catch you next time. Hey, folks. Hope y'all enjoyed that. And that's just, a, that's just an old school way of making some corn mash. It's simple. It's easy as long as you follow the steps. The temperature on your water and uh, and how you use your malt and your yeast and drawing the oxygen in there is the biggest step about that. So I well, appreciate you all tuning in. Let's let's keep the old ways alive. It says Memorial Day. I've got a good cold beer. I'm gonna go cook some hamburgers on the on the grill here in a minute. And let's give thanks to the ones that's fallen and the ones that's still here for protecting us and fighting for the country that we live in because without them we wouldn't have the freedom to be able to do this stuff that we're doing today. Another thing is is our police officers and our sheriff's deputies and our state troopers they're having a hard time right now with these people I don't understand it but anytime you see one any if they could be at a convenience store they could be at a restaurant getting lunch or whatever walk up there and pay for their stuff and tell them thank you you know, these boys, it don't matter what you do, it don't matter how bad you are, they'll put their self in front of you and protect your life every day. I just want to say thank you to all the law enforcement people out here in the country that, that do their job for us every day and let us live the way that we do. So y'all watch your top knot. We love you, and we'll see you soon.